All right, hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we are gonna be doing a get ready with me because I actually love doing makeup videos. I don't do them all that often, but they are amongst one of my favorite types of videos to film. And the last time I did a get ready with me for you guys, my makeup routine was relatively different. The things that I've really switched up now are just my go-to products, but I still use like the same bronzer and the same blush, but foundations and stuff have changed. So I figured I would show you guys how I go from this to that, and we're gonna do it like get ready with me chit chat style. People are sending in some topics on Instagram and stuff, so I'll be going back and forth to those, but before we get into that, let's jump into this makeup routine. So just a little disclaimer, not sponsored, totally not affiliated with any brands throughout this video, but I will do my best to find all the products and link them in the description box for you guys to make it nice and easy to find. Okay, first product I will be using is the Hollywood Flawless Filter by Charlotte Tilbury. This is basically a product that you just use to kind of create an inner glow. I I use this before I put on my makeup every time and it just kind of comes in a little spoolie like so. I just do a streak on my face, nose, on the chin, and you don't need a lot of this for it to go a long way, but I like to use just a little bit more glow. I want the mega glow. We're gonna decrease the brightness a little bit. There we go. And then I go in with this Tarte brush. I don't know that I should be using this brush, but I do. It works for me, but you guys are gonna be able to tell like my skin gonna look like it just has a nice natural glow. What is the hour that we all call it when the sun is glowing and your skin looks radiant? It looks like it's that hour every time <laughs> you put this on your face. I love this stuff. Next for foundation, I'm gonna be using the Tarte Amazonian Clay Full Coverage Foundation, and this is in the shade Medium Neutral. Oh, sorry, for the Charlotte Tilbury, that was in shade three, or medium, I'm always, Oh, this is actually light medium, shade three. But it works for me when I'm tan and when I'm not tan. However, it is best when I'm not super tan. Also, I got bit on my neck before anyone thinks that that is a hickey. Uh, no, I went to Miami and those mosquitoes love my blood out there. That Caribbean mosquito just wants to eat me right up. So I'm gonna be going in with the Tarte Amazonian Clay Full Coverage Foundation. This has SPF 15, which is obviously really good for when you're traveling and you wanna be protecting your skin. I also wear an SPF moisturizer underneath this. If you guys wanna know more about my skincare, I just did a video on that. So so I'll have that up in the card section for you guys. But this is in medium neutral and it's oil free and it sits on your skin for 12 hours. I just do streaks. This is definitely a thicker and heavier foundation and it spreads really well so you don't need a ton of this. I like to just keep this excess here and I start by blending all of this out first. And this brush really makes it easy to give you like a really nice airbrushy type of finish to it. I love this stuff so much. I like to just gently sweep it across the eyelids and then I'll go in here. I end up using all of it. I just get a little more coverage. I get really red in my nostril area, especially when I'm on my period. So if the back of your hand isn't a palette, then I don't know what you're doing with your life. Maybe it's not a sanitary. <laughs> I don't know. So I recently learned that beauty blenders are not meant to apply foundation with. I didn't recently learn this. I learned this like two years ago and it really stuck with me. It's only meant to blend out after you've used a brush or after you've used your hands or whatever you go in with this to like make sure you get all of the streaks out. So I've pretty much entirely stopped using this as an applicator and now I just use it to really go in and really smooth out all of the areas that might have had some streaks from the brush because obviously like I don't clean this brush every day. Maybe I should but I clean it more like once every week or every two weeks because I don't also wear makeup that often. So this just makes it nice and easy but this I do obviously clean every single day because sponges like they hold so much bacteria. So for concealer, they're both the Tarte Shape Tape concealers. One is in medium light or light medium and then the other one is in medium. So I like to use this one underneath my eyes and depending on how I'm feeling, I sometimes will mix this on top of it because I feel that this is a little too light sometimes and this is a little too dark, but I do normally use this one alone just to cover up blemishes because if you use concealer and it's too light for you, all it'll end up doing is accentuating your your under eye circles or your under eye bags because it's not actually hiding anything. If it's too light for you, all it's gonna do is bring out the blemishes and stuff that we so hate. So I don't think this is necessarily too light, but I'm still gonna add just a little bit of medium so that it's not so bright. And I'm gonna just kind of blend this out and it's gonna be naturally streaky. I find that when I do it this way, the brush obvi obviously absorbs way less of the product than the beauty blender will. So I like to use this to really get that coverage and then I go in with my beauty blender and blend it all out. So again, I'm not going for like a super blended look here, okay? It's probably looking cray cray right now. And then I just go in with my beauty blender. The Shape Tape Concealer is 
actually the freaking bomb. Okay, while I do this, let's see what some people are saying on Instagram. Someone asked, please update us on how acting and auditioning is going. So I guess I can say this now because I feel like some time has passed so I can probably openly discuss this. Last year was my first pilot season in Los Angeles and it was, it was a lot. It was crazy, it was new, it was unlike anything I've ever experienced when I was with an agency in San Francisco. Although when I was with my agency in San Francisco, I wasn't really taking it too seriously. And so now I'm with UTA, which is an amazing agency in Los Angeles. And I have agents that back me and actually believe in me and are just incredible to me. And they made my first pilot season so incredible. I went on dozens of auditions. I auditioned for Charmed. I auditioned for Sabrina the Teenage Witch. I auditioned for the new Purge movie or TV show that they're going to be making out of Purge. I auditioned for a lot of really great things. But to be fair, I was still very green, which means I, and I still am pretty green. I just didn't have a lot of experience under my belt in terms of just really being in class and learning as much as I could technically. Going on auditions alone adds to your experience. And so I was going into a lot of the rooms very nervous at the beginning. Then as I started to get a handle, I was more comfortable, but there was still technique that was lacking. And so it was a good one, but I only got one callback out of all of my auditions. And, and it was the same thing every time. It was like, oh, we loved her. She's great, but she's not the right look. Or we loved her. She's great, but we're going for, you know, somebody that can speak Spanish or, you know, just something super specific and random. At first there would be feedback like she was pretty nervous, but then it, it was all positive, just not the right look or not, you know, exactly what they're going for, which is typical in LA. So I got a call back for a TV show that I won't name, but it was going to be a new TV series on stars. Hundreds of girls went out for this role and I got my call back months later and I cried because I was so excited and I got to be in the room with David Ayer and it was really awesome and it was something for the books and I, I had gotten a call back for the lead role. So that would have been glorious. I got to get a taste of what it's like to just get a step closer to, to working and it was very exciting for me. They inevitably, it was between me and I think like five other girls. It was really awesome awesome to have even made it to that point. So now I'm excited for this pilot season because I'm going in with more experience under my belt, especially in class with one of the coolest acting teachers in Los Angeles, Howard Fine. He's absolutely the coolest guy. I admire him so much. You know, I've got new headshots. I've got a new haircut. So I've gotten through one pilot season. So now I'm really curious to see what this next pilot season is going to be like. It's been dead for the last like two months because it always slows down right before the holidays. No one's really pitching TV shows to networks or anything. So it's all going to really be starting again in January and February. So I'm so excited to see how it goes. I just try to be optimistic and have a positive outlook on this It can take years before I book something But I'm optimistic that as long as I keep working towards it something will come along for me That's the way I like to view it, but got new headshots and stuff. So I'm really excited. We'll see to set my face I'm gonna be using two different powders. The first one is gonna be this Onomi uh, makeup skincare powder It's the aha perfect setting powder um, This was actually sent to me as a PR product, but I have been using it ever since you can actually kind of see I use this every single day and then I have the Laura Mercier secret brightening powder for underneath my eyes and I like this powder because I've never really noticed it creating like a flashback or anything underneath my eyes but but I just like to do a light light coat of that I'm gonna be doing eyeshadow so I also want to make sure it's set for that reason too so again just use a little bit of that and then I go in with this powder, which kind of looks like it has a tint to it, but I don't actually think it does. This stuff is the bomb. I usually just pick it up with my Charlotte Tilbury brush and um, pat it into the top, tap off excess, and just graze it across my face. Because this is a matte foundation, I don't really need a ton of it, but I also really hate the feeling of stickiness, you know, from foundation, so I like to really make sure that I just always set my face. Okay, there's a lot of questions about anxiety and depression, which I wanted to try and avoid, but clearly if you guys are bringing it up, it is something you guys are feeling connected to, so I don't want to dodge that if that is clearly, you know, something that you guys need to hear about right now. So people are talking about feeling socially awkward, feeling out of place, and, you know, basically how to progress through that. Someone asked about how to deal with anxiety when you're out in public, stepping out of your comfort zone, how to not be socially awkward and feeling out of place. Your girl feels out of place all the time. Out of a lot of my friends, I am definitely one of the weirder ones. I'm the quirkier one and not in the cute way. Like there's cute and quirky where it's like, oh my God, like I'm so weird. <laughs> but for me, I'm legitimately, I'm weird. I often have times where I'm like, guys shouldn't like me because of how weird I am or I don't 
don't stand a chance because I'm gonna be too weird for them. And you just have to realize that if people do actually think that you're weird and they don't wanna hang out with you or talk with you because they think you're too weird, then they're freaking lost. You're probably amazing just the way that you are. You shouldn't care about whether or not you are good enough to meet somebody else's standards. You're not out of place, you're just you. And if people don't like that you, then they don't have to be around you. And then you find your people that do wanna be around you. You have to get out of your own head because that is what's holding you back very likely. And then being socially awkward, like we're all a little socially inept these days and that's because of wonderful social media. We have gotten so used to DMs and comments and text messaging and FaceTiming that when you're actually in person with someone, you don't know what to do. And the best thing I can say is limit your time on applications on your phone, on whatever, and focus on going out to bars or going out to you know different classes and stuff and forcing yourself to make friends in person because that's what I just had to do in Miami and I made a group of like four or five girlfriends that I love and I'm actually going to be hanging out with later today. Once you step out of your social awkwardness and out of your comfort zone, you will feel amazing and amazing people will follow. We are going to jump into eyeshadow. I don't wear eyeshadow every single day, but if I'm going to be filming, if I'm going to be going out with my girlfriends, if I'm going to be going out to an event, this is <laughs> my bulletproof. Like I do this every single day now when I do my makeup and it's because I had Chachi do my eyeshadow one day and I was like, oh, this is perfect and so easy and it looks like you put in more effort than you actually did. The color that I'll be using on my lid is the, well first, okay, let's start with the crease color. So I'm gonna be using the Tartiste Pro To Go. I talked about this in my monthly favorites video. And I'm gonna be using this Shiseido uh, crease brush that I got. And I'm gonna go in with this color, Chris. I'm gonna put that all over my crease and blend that down onto my lid. So I like to use the bottom part of this. I put this upside down and I just kinda like scoop that in. Okay, it does not look like that in person, but anyway. That's not a handle there. Do the same thing on this eye. So this doesn't have to be perfect because it's gonna get blended out later, but I do just like to really make sure that I blend as much as possible. Then I like to go in with this Tarte Park Avenue Princess Chrome Paint Shadow Pot. Oh my God, this color is so pretty. That's it. Oh wow. So this is super pigmented. I haven't actually even had to use this eyeshadow yet because I just take it from the lid. You do not need a lot of this, but I just go in with this little, it's actually, I'm pretty sure this is like a rinky dinky concealer brush, but I just pick up a little bit on the lid and then we're gonna use this because I don't want to mess with this up. And I just gently pat that. Oh, are you kidding? What a pretty color. Oh, I love it so much. And then once you put on eyeliner and stuff, it just looks even better. And then I'll lightly blend that up just so it's not like all compacted in one. Pick up more and I'll repeat that on the other eye. Then I will go back in with that Shiseido brush, pick up a little bit more of the color crisp and really make sure I get that all blended out. So I just like to go for like a very bronzy, toasty kind of look. No, I'm saying? If I'm feeling crazy, I'll pick up a little bit of this color called Boss and I'll just put that on the outer part of my eyelid just to kind of add a little bit more smokiness. That's pretty much it for the eyes in terms of eyeshadow. I will go back and add some underneath my waterline and stuff, but I want to get my eyeliner on first. I use a ton of different eyeliners. I use the Stila Stay All Day Eyeliner. I've used the Shiseido Eyeliner. But right now, I don't know where any of my eyeliners are, so I've been using this Tartiste um, liquid eyeliner. It's cool because on the back it also has like a smudged liner, but I never use these because they do not work for my eyes. I'm actually using both the Tartiste mascara and the Tartiste eyeliner. So I'm going to go off camera, put this on, and I'll be back in a jiffy. Eyeliner is done. Also guys, while I was doing my eyeliner, I just thought of like a really funny story because I sort of went on a date last night. I didn't necessarily, like it's a guy that I had matched with on a dating app like two months ago and we've been trying to hang out and it just never, ever, ever works out. By the way, really quick, I'm going to be using the Tarte Busy Gal Brows um, in the shade Black Brown. Love this stuff. I already have really thick brows. I just like to use this to add a little bit of a tint. Went on a date with this guy, whatever. It was a good time. I was just reflecting on that and thinking about how it was fun. And then I just remembered that, so Riley is my wingman when we go out and Riley either makes the perfect wingman or he's too pushy and we know this. Like we both are very aware of his issue. It just really depends on how much he's had to drink that night. But one night we went to this bar in North Hollywood, it's one of my favorite bars to go to, and the bartender was, you know, he was like giving me the eyes all night, he was flirting, there was no ring on his finger, like he seemed like a single man. He was like, I got you guys, like I'll get you guys drinks tonight, and I was like, okay. <laughs> 
what do you mean? Okay, fine, I guess. So I'm like, okay, this guy's really cute, Riley. Like, I want to give him my phone number. And I was like, but maybe I'll just do it before we leave. So I went to the bathroom. Riley ends up giving him my phone number and is like, my friend thinks you're really cute. Like, you need to talk to her. And so he just continued to give us drinks the whole night. Like, it was just, I drink beer. I don't really drink hard liquor ever. So I was just, and it, actually, they only serve beer there and like jello shot or gel, I don't know what they call jello shots. I don't know. He's like, just continuing to take care of us, still being really flirty, like striking up conversation and asking about where, you know, stuff that you would do when you want to get to know somebody. Any chance he could get to come around and talk, he would. So Riley's like pushing hard though. Like he's, he keeps going up and he's like, you better text her. And I'm like, Riley, stop it. Stop. Don't do that anymore. You're going to scare this poor boy away from me. We flirt for the remainder of the night. Okay. Like very casually. And then keep in mind, like I wasn't see seeking this guy out. Me and Riley were just chilling with our friend Kat. And this guy just kept coming up, right? I'm not, like when he's around flirting, I'm flirting back. Cool. I get a text. <laughs> I get a text the next day. I, I don't know if it was when he got off of work or if I, like if he had texted me in the morning, but he was basically like, <laughs> Hey, um, it's so not funny actually because I mean like the text is funny because it's It's because of Riley, but everything else is not something that I respect at all But this part was funny because he basically is just like hey, I'm sending you this text because <laughs> Your gay bestie was super pushy naturally shout out to you Riley, but I'm married So I wanted to at least text you and say you're really cool and I'd be down to be your friend but you know I'm married and I was like, <laughs> Yeah, no, yeah, that's that sounds about right. So I just say, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I wish that you would have said something earlier. Like I would have totally left you alone. I didn't see you wearing a ring. And he looked like he was my age. Like he looked like he was in his mid twenties, which I guess is now normal to be married in your mid twenties. But to me, I was like, there's no way that he, you know, but because of the way he was being, this dude was married and he was sending me like paragraphs. Cause I sent him a whole thing just saying like, I'm really sorry. I meant no disrespect. And he's like, so tell me about like the video games you like to play and stuff and I was like okay I'm gonna stop responding now I just literally stopped responding because if I was his wife mm -mm, let me tell you that would not fly with me at all I was like this man oh anyway I just thought of that story right now and it's amongst one of the most like yeah that would happen to you Jasmine stories that I've ever really experienced because like that would be my luck Anyway, guys, look at that. Look at the eyebrow difference, though. Isn't that so nice? It's very subtle, but it's enough. Yo, it traumatized me. I was like, I am never flirting with another guy again. So another boy story is, I was jaded after that, right? By the way, going with the Too Faced bronzer and this Tarte contour brush. We out. I'm done. The other day, maybe like a month ago, Riley and I were, we hadn't seen each other in a while because he, we were both traveling, and then we finally had like gotten back together. I think this is after Thanksgiving or before, oh, it was before Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. We were like, oh, let's go walk over to this breakfast spot that's by the house and, you know, just go get brunch together and have a cute little grand time, you know? So we did that and I was wearing no makeup. I was looking like a hot mess the way I was looking at the beginning of this video, except maybe I had some mascara. Nothing glorious. And I saw this boy. He was with his friend and I was like, oh, he's so cute. He didn't look like he was from LA. He looked like he was from the Midwest. I want to approach this guy and Riley's like, I'm going to go up to him. And I was like, no, <laughs> Riley, don't go up to him. I will, if I'm going to do it, I'll do it myself. But like, I don't know and he kept saying I'm gonna go I'm gonna go and I was like please don't because we're all waiting outside like he it just would have been super awkward so after like 15 minutes I muster up the courage and I'm like you know what I'm just gonna go up to him <laughs> so I, Riley's like are you gonna go I was like yeah I'm gonna go I'm gonna go right now and he, as I'm turning to walk away all I hear Riley saying <laughs> like this is what I hear as I'm walking away is oh god oh god oh god which is the last thing you want to hear as you're approaching a boy to flirt with him and get his phone number so I just turn I go up to him and I go hi Hi, my name's Jasmine. How are you guys doing? Or what did I say? I was like, hi, my name's Jasmine. Um, I'm going to be rather forward here, but I think you're really attractive, and I wanted to know if I could give you my phone number. Oh, God. Oh, okay, so he goes, oh, yeah, okay, cool. Um, Where are you from? And I was like, I live in LA. Where are you from? And he's like, I'm from the Bay. I'm like, there it is. That makes sense. Because I'm from the Bay, and I always, you know, I can always tell when a guy's from the Bay. I'm like, oh, you seem a little different. He's like, this is my friend, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, hi. And we just, like, kind of talk a little bit and I was like all right well I'm gonna get back to my friend but you know I'm gonna give you my number and if you decide to never text me again like that's totally fine I won't be offended I never do this type of thing so and he's like yeah I highly doubt that'll happen like I'll be texting you and I was like oh, okay 
Me? He does end up texting me the next day and his name is actually gonna remain anonymous But we do follow each other on Instagram now and we were supposed to hang out when I went up to the bay this last time For Thanksgiving by the way again using um, I'm using the dazzled Amazonian clay 12-hour blush by Tarte with the real techniques brush that I've, I've had this blush brush forever dust in this to get a little rose color effect on the cheeks. So we were supposed to hang out on Thanksgiving. He wanted to take me out to ramen, and I was all the way in San Jose, and he was all the way in Oakland, which if you're familiar with the Bay, that's pretty far. It's like an hour drive. And so we were like, we're gonna meet halfway, but it was just crazy for my family, and I ended up accidentally kind of ghosting him without intending to. So I feel like after that happened, he hasn't taken me seriously. Like, he's like, let's, like, he, he was cute. Like, he's like, let's go get ramen together. Um, I just got like a screen printing set. We can like screen print some stuff together and he's like a photographer and he was so sweet and so cute and I think I ruined my chances with him. Like I don't really text him much anymore because I feel like he just doesn't take me seriously. For my highlight, I'm using the Tartis Pro to Glow, Pro Glow, Pro Glow to Go and I'm using the color Burst right in there. It's kind of perfect and I just like to use this on my nose. My forehead, cheekbones, chin, and my cupid's bow. For this part, I proceed with caution. I'm gonna go in with this color right here, Stylin, and I'm just gonna pick up a little bit and put that right in the corner of my crease to add a little bit more of a smoky effect. This is mainly because I'm gonna be on camera today and I have an event tonight, otherwise I would have been fine with the other makeup that was more daytime. This kind of already adds an, a little bit more glam to the look. Very subtle though, enough to make a little bit of a difference. Blend that all out and then I'm gonna lightly sweep that on the lower waterline. And then I'm dealing with some issues with my under eyes getting really dry. It's because it's winter is coming. <laughs> It's because it's winter and my under eyes are like, it's let's dry out. This seems like a great time to just dry out. All right, so that is pretty much it for my face. I feel like I need a little bit more bronzer. Just a little bit. So for the lips, I'm gonna be using this Huda Beauty Liquid Matte in Sugar Mama. <laughs> um, I'm actually not that crazy about this color, but it was all I could really find. <laughs> so that's what we're gonna do. I just, it's the formula that I, that I don't really love, but the color is nice. I just find it looks kind of runny and I have to do a few layers. All right, I think, uh, I think we're done. To finish off my makeup, I'm gonna spray my face with the Urban Decay All Nighter Makeup Setting Spray and, and this is the oil-free version, paraben-free, temperature control technology. I don't know, I haven't honestly used this in a long time. Hopefully this isn't expired. Oh my God, no, it should be fine. I feel like I'm drowning in setting spray right now. I did not need that much. Woo! Just trying to dry off my face. I feel like I just took a shower. I'm not gonna actually do my hair really right now because it doesn't really need to be done till way later, so I just put it in a little half up, half down little, little thing here, but I hope that you guys enjoyed this get ready with me video. This is how I like to get glammed up anytime I feel like I have somewhere cute to go and I wanna be looking my very best. So um, this is as good as, as it's gonna get, ladies and gents like this is me you know this is me really trying with my makeup not trying with my hair but really really trying with my makeup so again I really hope you guys enjoyed this video if you want to see more makeup style videos and get ready with me videos uh, I will definitely try and find some more looks that I can do for fun I'm starting to have more and more fun playing with makeup and when I go back home to the bay I'm gonna pick up my whole makeup collection where I have literally dozens of brushes that have just been sitting in a closet so I'll be getting all of those then but yeah if you guys enjoyed this video make sure to throw the video a thumbs up if you're not already subscribed, make sure to subscribe to the channel. And I will try and have all these linked in the description box for you guys. That's going to be it for this video. I love you guys so much. And I'll see you in the next video for Vlogmas Day 16. I'm not going to lie. This is killing me. Vlogmas is killing me, but I'm really trying my best here. Okay, so please just acknowledge that. Okay, love you guys. I'll see you soon. Bye. Besitos. Bye. Uh -huh.